So this talk has a um, very scientific sounding title, and uh, that's for a reason, because as you will see, we are going to be discussing uh, scientific um, questions. And um, so basically, I'm going to work on an example at first, which is the, um, from the matrix uh, benchmark um, the inner product, so which is um, the inner product uh, word is the inner loop of, of this benchmark, and the, the actual inner loop is, in, is visible in blue here. And um, you see the, this code here um, in three columns. So we first have um, credit code, uh, then we have uh, the unoptimized native code, so the old native code, and then the, um, the optimized native code where, where um, the optimization is going. Um, and basically, these are the three columns. And uh, because the screen is not long enough, uh, the rest of the uh, screen is uh, another three columns uh, over to the right. So basically, it's going down from here and then continuing over here. And um, one thing um, that you can see is that um, the um, chief of is doing a mixture of Reddit code and native code. Um, and uh, so, yeah, as I said, to the left, you have the Reddit code, um, which basically has all these words uh, that I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, and for each uh, word, we get a piece of native code. And this, co this optimization is called uh, dynamic super instructions. So in, when, when we jump, uh, when, when we do the thread code dispatch to this address, it actually jumps to this code and then runs. And at the end of this word, there's no uh, dispatch. Instead, it continues with the next word. So actually, all these slots are not being used. Uh, they are just there because it has always been that way. And it's, it's a kind of legacy. Um, so uh, what you see is that here the red stuff is the, um, is the uh, everything that has to do with the instruction pointer. And in the unoptimized version, for every word, we have an, uh, an instruction pointer update. And that's the thing that's uh, going to be optimized away. So in, in the optimized version, all these instruction pointer updates are missing. Uh, yes, so that's uh, the main thing. Uh, you see over here, where is it? Yeah, um, there's one, uh, so, until that point, the instruction pointer is never used. But in the lit plus uh, word, uh, primitive actually, uh, it is being used for, access, for accessing this uh, number 1,600. Um, and so at that point, we need uh, the, the actual instruction pointer. Um, and uh, so one way to do it would be to do a um, to do a, a, an instruction pointer update right before this, and this is stage one of the optimization. And the, but the full optimization actually um, has a version of lit plus that knows that it is at a certain offset from the um, of, from from the uh, but, so the, but the, the should be IP is um, somewhere further down from the actual IP, and um, which has um, this what is called, yeah this this offset is uh, shown here. It's 104 bytes, whereas here we have zero bytes offset. So the IP at that point is still pointing uh, to here. Oh, well, to actually to here. And that's why in order to access this number, 
we need uh, to use 104 bytes of offset from, from, from this point. And then basically we, we have ordinary um, primitives that don't uh, need the IP again. Um, and we can optimize these IP updates away also. And finally, we have this current um, loop um, um, instruction, um, um, which has um, yeah, another inline argument, immediate argument, and um, which uses another offset 128 bytes uh, to um, access this. And the other thing that's important about the, the point loop is it is actually a control flow word. So it actually needs to set the IP if the, uh, if the, um, if, if the loop um, is, if the loopback uh, edge is taken. And that's what's going on here. So basically we have here two, yeah, the, this, Address of the start, which points, which is here, um, is uh, loaded here into A3. And finally, then if the branch is, if the loop is uh, taken, it's, uh, it moves A3 into IP. And uh, so in this way, we get here in, on the taken path, we get an IP update here. So, um, Yes, uh, some other things um, you see that you have, we have some blue stuff, which is uh, stack, data stack pointer updates, and green stuff, which is uh, return stack pointer updates, which will play a role later. All right, oh, a blank slide, and the next one. So we optimize away most IP updates. The normal case is uh, to don't uh, insert an IP update and just record that we have, uh, um, yeah, we remember where the where, where IP points to. And at some point, um, there are some places where IP needs to be up, uh, up to date, and then we insert uh, an IP update. And one uh, thing is, in a taken branch. And this is parenthesized because the, the, this um, taken branch stuff is actually inside the primitives and our optimization doesn't need to care about it. So it, it doesn't know anything about it and doesn't care. So our optimization only works, only deals with straight line code. Um, the, um, the other thing is if there's a super block end, so which means that there's some other branch coming in from somewhere, before that we need uh, uh, to have the IP up to date because the other branch is going to have an up to date IP and we can't have an, an, a non up to date IP on, on, the, on the fall through branch. The, Third thing is calls, and that includes stuff like execute, uh, especially execute and deferred words and such things. Um, it, that needs also an up-to-date IP because the call is going to, uh, if I do an execute and it uh, executes a colon definition, the colon, the start of the colon definition is going to push the current IP and the return is going to restore it. And of course, if that's wrong, it's not going to work. Um, and we have, uh, yeah, non-relocatable uh, native code also needs an IP update before it because at the end of this non-relocatable um, native code, there's going to be a phrase code dispatch and it's, uh, um, and, and that needs an up-to-date IP. And yeah, so, uh, and finally, in some cases, in case of immediate arguments, we need to, to do it. So one thing is, if we only do the stage one of the optimization that I talked about, we need to do it before every word that has an immediate argument, or in, um, 
if we do the full optimization, we have some versions of, of the, all these words with immediate, uh, of some of the words with immediate arguments, but uh, some words with immediate arguments are not supported, and uh, we also don't support all offsets, so there's a limit to, to how big the offsets can be. Um, and so in that case, if, if it's too big or if it's a, um, a word with an immediate argument that, um, that doesn't have uh, an offset, um, that, um, um, that doesn't support an offset at all, we need to update the IP before. So, yeah, so, um, and the, the feature, or the, one of the goals of the, this optimization is to do it machine independently. And so we cannot patch the IP update uh, offset into the, in, into the, into the code. We uh, actually have 24 versions of code that do IP updates for up to 24 cells. And we, we select the right one and copy it into the code. And when, if we need a bigger IP update, we just have several of them. So until we, until we have it all. Right, uh, and similarly for primitives that where we support multiple offsets, we also have, for now, in, for the research version, we have 24 versions uh, of each. And uh, these are the words, so lit, call, question branch, lit, fetch. So these are the mo most common ones, uh, words with, um, or the most common primitives with immediate arguments. Lit, fetch, branch, parent loop, lit perform, which is um, what the third word compiled to. Lit plus and does XT and does XT is what create does words compiled to. Um, and uh, for these we have um, this, this many uh, also 24 versions, but I think in the production version it's probably going to be 10 or so because after 10 it's a very low number that needs larger offsets. <clears throat> and we can afford to insert um, an IP update before these few versions. And yeah, that's um, that's the main uh, feature. There's no architecture-specific code. So I tested it on AMD64 and on um, ARM64 and on RISC-V and without uh, any architecture-specific changes. So um, this, these are the results um, of, um, um, of, of the number of instructions. So um, in three different architectures, AMD64, AMD64, and the 64-bit version. And um, we see basically many so that uh, every that's for every benchmark, the left one is the stage one, with, uh, which does an update before every uh, word that does uh, that needs an immediate argument, and uh, the right one is uh, the full optimization, which uh, has um, the immediate argument words with options. And yeah, basically, we are mainly interested in the latter version, as you can see, yeah, having um, the, um, the IP, um, having the um, primitives with um, different, with immediate arguments, with different offsets, like something, at least here. Yeah. Um, we see about the factor 1.2. For many benchmarks, and for some, it's, it's somewhat smaller. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I haven't looked into it, but ARM A64 is a, is a little bit, um, it has um, uh, auto increment um, addressing modes, and I think. 
it um, when I looked at the code, it was like it doesn't optimize that much away because all the all the IP updates are uh, have become auto increment addressing those. And my guess is that here we see um, a case where actually the full case is uh, the full optimization is doing things uh, that without auto increment addressing modes where the um, the other version is using auto increment or I don't know maybe <laughs> I haven't looked closely at it and here we have oh yeah uh, this is a different scale so sorry about that so here we, you see typically factor 1.2 and sum is going up to 1.4 or something like this. Um, and here's the performance of modern high performance cores. Um, and again, you see up to the left uh, the, the stage one and uh, to the right the full optimization. And you see, yes, uh, for some, for many of the benchmarks, it's that the speed up is not that great. But for a few benchmarks, for example, for the matrix uh, benchmark that we have looked at before, it, uh, it has very good speed ups. And um, the bias of basically Sen3 and Rocket Lake, these are two AMD64 um, implementations. And Firestorm is an A ARM A64 implementation. And, um, here you see that um, the Shaw 512 benchmark is doing really great with the factor of 2.2. Um, so, um, what are the, the questions? Are why is the speed up um, on some benchmarks um, much higher than the instruction reduction? I mean, we have just eliminated some ads which are relatively cheap instructions so why is it that we are seeing uh, speed ups by a factor up to 2.2 on some benchmarks and why not on all benchmarks and the third question is why is the speed up of uh, SHA 512 bigger on Firestorm than on the other processors so if you look back you see that Sharp 512 is not particularly spectacular on, on Sand 3 and Rocket Lake, and it's very spectacular on, on, on the Firestorm. Uh, Firestorm is the performance core of um, Apple M1, just so for those who don't know. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and uh, to understand this um, behavior, we need to look at the um, performance components of this kind of um, interpreter, compiler, JIT compiler um, medley. Basically, one, um, once upon a time, uh, I wrote a lot of papers about branch misprediction, and that's uh, so. Um, in two ways, first of all, um, the software measures that um, um, that, that we did uh, improve branch prediction, and also the other engineers improved the branch prediction. And basically, when when we uh, measure branch mispredictions, it's pretty low uh, for for chief of these days. Um, and another thing is resource limitations. But um, so, with, for example, the, uh, the CPUs can execute maybe five or six or eight instructions per cycle. And if uh, we give it more instructions per cycle, then the, the, the resource is limited. Or it can uh, perform so and so many um, uh, loads or something like that. That would be resource limitations. But uh, taking away ads is really, I mean, uh, shouldn't uh, have such a big effect, and uh, as you will see, it's not really uh, that effect that at, for the big uh, CPUs that we looked at, it's, it's not resource uh, limitations that make a big issue. And then the data dependencies on the virtual machine level, for example, 
I read one um, uh, fourth variable and write one fourth variable, or uh, I do an add on uh, of two values in fourth and so on. So this is uh, data flow on the virtual machine level. That's one thing. And we have dependencies on stack pointer updates. We have dependencies on return stack pointers, and we'll be using color coding as in the um, as in the example before. And of course, there are things that interest us with um, instruction pointer updates. And we have here a nice data flow graph the inner loop of uh, inner pro product, which which is the word we showed before. And we see basically, yeah, we have a long sequence for one iteration of this inner loop. And you know, the, in, in the, this benchmark, there are 200 iterations of that before it does anything else. Uh, so it's basically, uh, it's dependencies on these instruction points of state, which uh, then, Get back to more instruction point updates and so on. And this is one thing that limits uh, the performance to having, I don't know, at least 15 cycles or whatever um, per iteration. So, um, and that's why, uh, and, uh, if we look at other things, we have for the next update, we have. Four cycle, four cycle recurrence, and for the return stack point update, we also have a four cycle recurrence. And one other thing is this left, which is the top of stack register, which, if you look at the screen, you see that there's actually um, the top of stack at the end of this loop uh, is actually sent back to the beginning, but there's no uh, data flow dependence uh, from from that value to the next to, to, the, to the values in the next iteration. So it's, it's being stored here, and that's it. Um, you may have missed. Uh, I think I'm sure that I missed some um, dependencies through memory, but. Um, if you look at the results, this pretty much explains what's going on. So basically, uh, these big CPUs can be put to a lot of more of these instructions per cycle, but they have to wait for the instruction pointer for at least after some iterations. I mean, they can do a, they can store a few hundred. Um, instructions and reorder them, but once all these buffers are full, basically it has to wait until the, uh, until the instruction point updates uh, continue and uh, allow allow uh, and unclog the, the the process. So, um, next question: Why do we not see such speedups for our benchmarks? And um, especially one thing is it, um, that the first six are the, um, uh, uh, from the application benchmark suite uh, for a fourth. Uh, and so these the next two are the small benchmarks, which basically the matrix is from, it's coming from, um, the benchmarks, which have been translated by um, yeah, forgot the name, um, John, no, not John Hayes, by Marty Freeman, um, into four. And so basically, they have been actually written in another language. And um, 512, I think, is also coming from code that has been written in another language. So maybe there's a difference between how fourth code is written and how um, code in another language is written. And, um, and basically, that's not really what's going on here. So if you have an, an 
in a loop uh, full of primitives, we are going to see like things like this, and we are going to see big speed ups. But fourth code is typically written with small routines that do uh, that call each other, and then you get stuff like this. So you do a call, and then uh, the execution continues here, and then you do another call, and the execution continues here. And then the dependence chain stops, and uh, it continues between nodes, the address nodes, and the call. Uh, continue to fix the dimension, but not not this one. So we get here to another return, and this will uh, continue on this dimension. And in the end, we see that we have much more parallelism in the IP updates, and of course the. IP updates, you also get a lot of other instructions. And so we, in the end, we run into the um, resource limitation thing, and or maybe in, uh, into stack pointer updates problems or something like that. Anyway, it will no longer be the IP updates with many calls. So that's my theory well, why we are seeing uh, not so spectacular bench, um, speed ups on the uh, fourth application benchmarks. This um, leads to an idea of how to optimize the, um, an alternative optimization for, for these loops. So basically, what we can do is when we do have a do, we are not just uh, push the index and limit on the return stack, but we also push the return address, or the, the loop start address on the return stack. And uh, then we uh, perform the loop, and then we come uh, to the next loop, and we come to the loop part. We uh, uh, take the return address, or the loopback address from the return stack, and branch to that. And, uh, which will basically, yes, it's it's like a call, except it isn't. I mean, it's it's on the on the source code level, it's a, it's a, it's just a normal do loop, but on the uh, virtual machine level, it's it works very similar to a call. Yes. Um, Yes, so basically, yeah, we can say it returns to the to the uh, to the start of the loop and, uh, and continues here. And, um, oh, oops, so this chain of uh, the updates is broken, and it starts another chain of the updates and another chain of the updates and so on. Until finally the, the last uh, loop. Uh, so through and this thing continues, but at least uh, that's only one and not 200 in a row that uh, that have this uh, dependence chain. Yeah. So and on the negative, so basically more to the left, we have uh, this um, an up optimized version. So it doesn't do an uh, the IP update optimization I demonstrated earlier, but instead it does the do loop with uh, um, with the uh, with uh, storing on the return stack. And we see on some benchmark it doesn't do anything, and on other benchmarks it gives very good data. See some matrix. Uh, it's surprising that it does um, not that much in some trees of the matrix. That's an alternative. Uh, one thing, of course, in fourth is that we cannot do it for, for begin loops because, um, um, at least, I don't see a good way because, the, uh, at least in the standard fourth system, um, 
there are, there's too much in, of the internals of begin loops exposed to the to the program, and we cannot do the, use the return stack for for this stuff. But if you are implementing a non-standard for for a different virtual machine, you can uh, you you can also uh, use this for um, for other kinds of loops and not just counted loops. So, next question. Why is the speed of our child going to bigger on Firestorm? And the answer is, um, my theory was that it was due to quick clicking. So, basically, what we are doing here for the AMD64 processors, uh, we are using um, stack caching with only either zero um, stack elements in the Registers of one stack element in the registers. And we use zero, one, two, or three stack elements in registers. And this reduces uh, the number of stack point updates we have to do. And I just switched. Um, using here uh, in one uh, stack items in the register, and lo and behold, as you see, the Support now for this theory that um, we see benefits of reduced data stack point updates from um, um, stack caching. And now some ideas on how to do stack caching, better stack caching on, on AMD 64, and maybe we'll see such better speed ups uh, for these CPUs too. So, in conclusion, yes, we can do, um, we can optimize um, IP updates possibly. Uh, this reduces the execute number of executed instructions by about a factor of 1.2. Um, it increases the performance by a very uh, variable amount, but we see some spectacular speed ups, with, uh, the best one being a factor 2.2. And the reason is that IP updates are the critical part in looping benchmarks. Uh, and the alternative is to optimize loops, as we have seen. And there's a synergy between stack caching and uh, this IP update optimization, as we have seen with the um, SHA 512 results. Thank you. So, yeah, well, uh, the, my understanding is you are asking about the um, return stack uh, optimization of hardware, um, um, and uh, which is if you don't pair up the, the calls with the returns correctly, you get uh, slowdowns. Um, and this is not an issue here because. Um, the way we implement calls has nothing to do with the call instruction of the, um, of the CPUs, and um, the returns also have nothing to do with the return instructions of the CPUs, and therefore um, we, we don't use the, this optimization, at least for, the, uh, for this uh, mixture of credit code and uh, native code compilation. I mean, you get, so the question is whether hardware caches the return stack, and of course it does, but I mean, it's the normal data cache. And it's like, um, there's also one other thing that uh, modern CPUs do, they do something called store to load forwarding, which, uh, so in, uh, instead of having to go through a uh, rather longish process when a load is close to a store. So if you do a 
two ARMs right afterwards an ARPROM. Um, in some cases, the hardware can actually um, speed that up, but it's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one thing is, yeah, you have seen uh, return um, stack um, updates also a possible problem. We don't do um, stack caching of the return stack yet, so, um, and probably not, not that uh, soon. So um, in, in code that does heavy 2R from and so on, it might be, there might become an issue that the uh, return stack updates might become uh, uh, the critical path. So, so the question is how to get this hardware independent every time. Basically for, um, yeah. we generate versions of the updates for 1 to 24 cells. And so we copy the right piece of code. In, in, and, and likewise for the primitives of the immediate arguments. If we have, for example, the lit 24 versions and we copy the right version of that. It was chosen because um, uh, the, this um, inner product thing, uh, 16 was not enough for that. <laughs> And, and I wanted to see what it looks like. And, and, and then I measured, yeah, okay, it's like, I mean, this inner product is one case where it actually, uh, when uh, you benefit from having more, but typically on, on most code, 10 is enough. 